What's going on, fam? It's your boy Sydney and Tori from the Naked Gardeners. We are on our way to the Homestead Festival out here in Tennessee. So this festival has a lot of speakers. From what we can tell, it's going to be quite amazing. Now, who are you most excited? To Everyone. Hear? Everyone. I really am too. I really. Well, am. Per of course, my friend, my dear friend, my sister from another Mister Jess and Jeremiah even though it's just Jess speaking. I'm interested to hearing Justin Rhodes. My pork uh, rind. Pork rind. interested to uh, hear uh, pork run. And there's gonna be some great, great other uh, presentators. Farm Girl in the Making, Anne of All Trades. Yeah. We just watched uh, Sunny's Place on one of her Instagram lives. So today's Thursday. We left at five o'clock in the morning. Our farm sitter already know what to do. And I feel bad for her because there was a rainstorm that kicked off right as we left. Yeah. And I know it was raining all day. <laughs> I started the first leg. She's finishing off the second leg. So we're gonna be rooming up with Hidden Oaks Homestead with Chip and Nicole and our special guest that got a ticket at the last minute is with Sunny's Place and uh, basically Emma and her husband Max. So we're excited. We got three couples in this Airbnb. It's gonna be the coolest because all of us are foodies. We're all bringing different food things. from our homesteads yeah. and all stuff of us, like, like that. prepared stuff. Got we're some board cooking. games, uh, cooking, just chilling and relaxing with normal homesteaders of like-minded folks are doing. So. so when we first got there, we got there before Chip and Nicole and we were just kind of scoping out the scene and the place was amazing. I picked it out, of course. <laughs> when we were all discussing with the other couples about what place to get, the guys said they have to have two bathrooms. At least two bathrooms. That's all I needed to know. So then I started looking at areas in the Airbnb, the location of where the festival was. I didn't want to have to drive. After driving nine and a half, ten hours to get there, I didn't want to drive an extra length just to get to that property. So uh, I found a place that was literally kind of around the corner in the country, like 11 minute drive. About 15 minutes. Was it? Okay. It was 11 mile drive. We should let Nicole and Chip. Yeah. Because they secured the place. Mm-hmm. That needs a curtain. The layout of the property was gorgeous. They had it really set up to fellowship with other people with the fire pit and the pool. All of us thought that that was the longest hallway we'd ever seen in a house ever. So we had posted this out about a few months back and we got a lot of flat because a lot of homesteaders in our Facebook group was saying, oh man, that is way too expensive for a conference. And we had to basically say, hey, this is a once in a lifetime with all of these great speakers. And it was nice to see uh, Roy Feek say, mention about why it was so expensive. He had to do a lot of things for his infrastructures, like put new power in, get new water, a lot of infrastructures, and even build a new uh, driveway entrance for all the people that's coming to see this conference. To even have it. And another thing about that is, is that preparing for this event for just the two days, actually the cost involved costs more than the entire property. We haven't been to a lot of events. This was the first event that there was such a huge, valuable content of speakers there. I've never been to an event that, that was just so varied like that. It wasn't just small homesteaders. These were people that are professionally marketing products, proven success that were there too. And that's something we need to listen to if we're going to ever make a profit on our homestead. Now, he did also mention this was his first time doing this. Hopefully, the next following events probably won't cost as much. But I mean, it's still, I mean, amount of knowledge that you were able to gain from hearing these speakers is, like I said, is definitely worth it. Now that he has infrastructures in place moving forward, he kind of gave a hint that the cost wasn't going to be as steep, but I don't want to hold him to that because we don't know how the market is 
they literally had to create a space just to have people come. So I, I have to give him some, some slack on that because he did address it on his YouTube channel, that question. And I think that that's a brave question to take on. Mm -hmm. There were way too many valuable speakers to sit here and name them off, but I really, really enjoyed watching Temple Grandin, Joel Salatin, and Sherry Salatin did a great marketing talk, especially for people that are wanting to make a profitable farm from where they're at. For me, I enjoy pork farm because he gave two speeches, one about the business aspect of raising pork, and then he also gave the following day a marketing aspect of raising pork. Then we had Jess, which I didn't get to uh, see, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then Angela from the permaculture, uh, where she talks about different aesthetics that you can incorporate a permaculture concept for your homestead. Every time we go to these events, there's other content creators like ourselves. So there's a few that we got to meet and we want to introduce them to you. Well, I am Faith Family Homestead. My name is Dominique and we just moved to our property in October, but I started my YouTube channel in December. And so just documenting us turning our property into a homestead. So mostly right now I'm sharing about gardening because that's what I love to do. And so just changing my nothingness into a beautiful big garden and I just love it. So Okay. And what all do you have on your homestead? So we have egg layer chickens, we have meat chickens, we have ducks, we just got goats uh, last week I think. And uh -huh. then we're getting rabbits uh, next week and turkeys. So. What type of rabbit? Uh, meat rabbits. So. I mean, do you know the... No, I don't. I think it was New Zealand maybe. It was okay. called a Rex. I don't know. Okay. I have no idea. All right. And you got YouTube, Instagram, any Facebook website? Yeah. So I have a YouTube channel called Faith Family Homestead. And then my Instagram is Faith Family Homestead underscore. Okay. No <laughs> website, nothing yet? No. No. Okay. No. And what about you? Hey, so I am Taquisha from Our Freedom Song. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started my, so I'm a brand new beginner gardener. Woo -hoo! Yes, yes. <laughs> I have joined the community. And let me tell you, like, I'm so blown away. And it's so incredible to join this community of people who are so uplifting. They're so knowledgeable. And they have been pouring into me like crazy. And I love it. And so I just started my journey, like I said, about a month ago with, with gardening. And it's been so satisfying like the whole process and so i'm documenting that on our youtube channel our freedom song and i also have instagram which is also our freedom song and it's exactly like it sounds our freedom song and our freedom song is just it's not just going to be gardening but it's it's a part of our story it's what we're writing and that's our freedom song and so um it's just inviting people to come along on this journey with us and so it has all types of things one of the things that I love is beautiful spaces. And so I feel like just because I'm out in the garden, I don't want to, you know, it doesn't have to look like a forest. It can look very beautiful. It can be aesthetically pleasing to somebody who just likes beautiful things. You can make a beautiful space even outside. And so I love reusing things. I'm very resourceful, um, turning things that are trash into treasure. And so all those type of things are just really important to me. And I love doing those things. And I want to share that with everybody. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. And where are y'all out of? in South Carolina. Both of y'all in South Carolina? Yeah, so okay. Zone 8B. Yep. Okay, and what are you currently growing? Is your, do you have any animals, pets? Okay. So I, we have chickens. Okay. So we have 14 chickens, and that was brand new um, last summer. Awesome. We got our chickens, and so it was so crazy because we were supposed to get our chickens, <laughs> yeah. like, we yes, and we got them a month early. So my husband, because he's super re resourceful, um, and he just got some you know, wood, scraps, and he made this beautiful coop. And I can't wait, because I'm about to do a coop tour. Awesome. But he made this beautiful coop out of scrap, you know, materials that we found. And so, yeah, so that's been really, really exciting, like having the chickens, and I'm just growing like regular stuff. I'm just wanting cucumber, a little tomato, you know, a little zucchini. Like, you know, I'm just trying to do the regular things, little pepper, so, awesome. yeah. All right, thank y'all so much. I'm Z-Man. And I'm Sis, and we are Kadesh. Farm Homestead and Kadesh Farm. Yeah, and Kadesh Farm Homestead. <laughs> the reason why she said it, like, because we have two channels. Mine is more focused on the pond. We just bought some property. Okay. We're doing a lot of work. We're renovating the pond, boat, crickets, 
fish, all that type stuff, and the homestead part is where we actually live at with the five acres. And where's your five acres at? It is Smyrna, located in yeah, Smyrna, Tennessee. Okay, okay. The property is in Lewisburg, Tennessee, not far from where we are now. Okay, and what got y'all started into the uh, homesteading life? Me being raised in the country, you can take the country boy out the country, but you can't take the country out the boy. All and right. We bought some property uh, after we lost the house in the flood. That's a totally different story, That's but that was a blessing to us. Yeah. As the old saying, if it wasn't for the flood, um, once we moved to this five acres, all that land, and I just went back to my roots of how I was raised, and I wanted my kids to experience the same thing. And that's how we got started like that. Yeah. Okay, so. Then he had to work on me a little bit. You know, <laughs> I had to bring my um, bling with me. You could be, you can be, have a country bling, so, you know what I'm saying? You can look good in the garden. <laughs> yeah. You don't get them nails out, you know? I got my nails on, but I'm good. All right. You know, I am so good, but it's a blessing, it's peace. Now, you were telling me uh, earlier, yesterday, about the things that y'all, y'all done this before, yes. y'all did events. Can you tell some of our viewers, what, of the kind of reiterate the things that you told me to our, our viewers, what you were doing in the previous about the conventions and conferences and stuff like that? Yeah. We, um, at our farm, for about four years, we would have um, family fun day events, and our style of relating it out was... Um, emails and word by mouth. So mm -hmm. I was the marketer, the promoter, or whatever. So and people knew us by buying their produce and chickens, organic chickens and whatever we had on the farm we sold, they would buy it from us. And so I was we were like, hey, let's have a family fun day. Well we had a family fun day and the first turnout was almost five hundred people. Yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. We didn't <laughs> Expect you know how old party goes in high school. You invite one person, and the next thing you know, a bus pull up. You know, dump the people at the party. And we learned from that. And also, along with the family fun day, we got our kids involved. And what do you think they wanted to come? Kids. So we had things set up for kids, and we had a lot of educational stuff set up for the parents and kids. We had a lot of people that wanted to get into gardening and different things like that. Yeah, had vendors and. It just kind of took off on us from there. Yeah, and so we had it for like about four years. It stayed steady between 350 and four for um, for about four years, and that's how Kadesh Farm grew. So now we exhausted that land, and we need more land. That's why we prayed for more land. Yeah. Because people are still contacting us. When are we going to start back the events? When are we going to? You know, because we can help them. We help a plethora of people get started on their properties. Um, and so they want that education as far as how to live off the land. So the 30 acres that we just purchased, we're going to start back the this, but we're leveling up. <laughs> we are leveling up for real. So Sydney and Tori going to be there, y'all. I'm just saying. <laughs> the Nanky Gardeners are going to be there. So get ready. But, um, yeah, we're planning all of that now. So um, we're really looking forward to starting back again. It's okay. Such a blessing. Now, what was your purpose of uh, coming here and what did you uh, enjoy about being here? Me, y'all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to edit it just for that. <laughs> no, really, meeting a lot of the Instagram and YouTubers that we watch and, and communicate with and because it's a community and also to learn, we needed to learn more um, to advance on our farm too. Yeah, so, well, me being a, uh, mm -hmm. I, I've learned in a lot of work that I'm in, you have to be a student of whatever you're experiencing or, or involved in. And I want, I turned myself into a student maybe about, I really, really got serious about a lot of things when it came to the farm life <laughs> about uh, five or six months ago. And I immersed myself into dealing with the regenerative part of the grasses and understanding yeah. grasses and going out and looking at the type of grass that I can name grasses not as four. All I care for was green. Now I need to have a little more, I've learned to have a little more contact when it comes to that green. Is it going to provide nutrients to my animals and provide good health and them being able to have babies and different things like that. Um, I came here to just learn, just become a student. I couldn't, I was bouncing from tent to tent just taking notes all over the place. And then meeting you guys and meeting a lot of other great people to just immerse myself and just learn because you have to become a student of anything that you're involved with. All right. Yeah. So you got any websites or anything? We are working on the website, but if anybody wants to contact us, we're at Kadesh Farm, K-E, not K-A, K-E-D-E, -E, 
S H Farm Homestead on Instagram, and we also have a YouTube channel. All right, so go check out their YouTube channel, watch some of their videos, and if you like it, subscribe. That's right, please do. Hit that like button. Yeah. yeah. We have two. We have Kadesh Farm Homestead, and like I said, we have Kadesh Farm. Mine is more geared towards dealing with tilapia and fish mm -hmm. and hunt and different things like that. Yeah, and oh. the homestead is geared more towards the gardening, um, more towards the action around what we're doing now. We want to start more canning videos because we do can, I do can, I dehydrate. We're about to start freeze drying, um, teach people how to build soil, um, teach people um, just how to garden simple. Because it's, it's really not that hard. So we just help you process it and we love you through that process. Amen. All right, thanks. Then urban kids, they've done a bunch of you know side-by-side -side, uh, studies over and over and over again. And uh, they're they're actually they're actually encouraged the farmer wants to you know spray out all the fence lines, have everything clean and sterile. So uh, I'm Sean Pacera, the mindful farmer. Uh, my background is in organic farming, and I'm looking forward to bringing tools to homesteaders, gardeners, and small farmers. Uh, a lot more appropriate tools, better design, better ergonomics. Uh, this is the first launch of the Finesse. So this is a broad fork. It's all steel, all American steel, and everything, powder-coated labels, cardboard boxes, all manufactured in Central Arkansas. Uh, I designed this, uh, particularly with women in mind. A lot of uh, the workers at the farm I managed were young women, and they struggle with the larger broad forks to be able to get those into the ground. So this is why I made it wider and with a T handle to where you can step side to side and work in there deep. And then uh, not have to reposition your hands, you just lean back and you get a groove going and you're lifting and loosening soil and making really good garden prep. Uh, another thing too that I, I designed this thing is to have the, the teeth on six inch center. So once you have it uh, nice and fluffy, you can pull the whole thing back and it's going to level uh, the garden bed and mark six inch centers on like a 30 inch bed, which is what I typically use. And then you can plant straighter, seed straighter, and it's much easier to cultivate uh, planting in those straight rows. So that's the finesse. The big thing about it is it's a no-till approach to gardening. So when you till, this is an example, you're basically destroying that soil structure. Uh, these little clumps are called peds. This is how the soil fractures and crumbles. And it creates these macro channels. So whenever you put pressure on that, it's still you still have those channels there. If I till that, this is my, my tilling demonstration. And then I apply pressure to that. It, it forms this like smeared, flat, compacted area. And when that happens and then that hits water, the water just runs off. So you see a farmer like till a big field, disc a whole field, it rains heavy and then it's just brown rivers running off and we're losing so much topsoil. This, you can go through a whole garden, broad fork, and get a heavy rain and all that water is just going to be going straight down. So another benefit too is that it can, uh, you can use it to dig root crops. So you're digging up carrots, beets, uh, we use it for dahlias, uh, dig up dahlia tubers. But it's just, it's just uh, a good workflow. So my, my goal is to just have basically a cultivator in this tool and I can do everything I need to do in the garden for the day. So yeah, keep on mindful farmer. I, I got a whole slew of tools I'm about to come out with and try to hit one a month actually uh, for the next couple of years. This is the Ranger 24, it holds 24 laying hens. Uh, the Ranger 48 is twice as wide, holds 48 laying hens. Uh, what I found is having the external nest uh, boxes, the chickens won't sleep in it and so that way you get clean eggs. My goal is to raise chickens without ever touching the coop at all. And so they can lay all the eggs, roll away from the nest, uh, the front of the nest box. It's also it's just designed as a greenhouse. So in the, sum, the summertime, the shade cloth goes on and it's going to keep it cool. Uh, the chickens spend most of the time underneath the coop. And in the winter time, you take the shade cloth off. And even those days where it's like 18 degrees in ice, it's probably 45 degrees in here. So it's keeping them warmer, they're going to lay longer. And then the whole thing is designed to be really lightweight to where anyone can move it. So my, my eight-year-old does the, the chicken chores. He collects it twice a week, and then we move it once a week to fresh grass. But you can move it literally with one thing here. And then uh, the chickens come in and out every day through this automatic door. 
It basically opens and closes with the sun. So we came to the conference and we just left the chickens and they're fine for the next five days. So reducing chicken chores, reducing labor, it's really important so that's all part of this, this design. Uh, these aren't live on the website yet. I'm still working through supply issues like everybody else. Uh, but probably next month we'll have the different models available. This was the first event that has ever taken place at his property at this level. And every time something like this is put together, there's pros and there's cons, and they're on a learning curve. For us, initially arriving, the signage, finding the place was very difficult. We kind of went a detour. It's gonna jump out at you. So if you, if you go back, make a left out of here, but <laughs> You're on pressure now. Um, <laughs> if you make a left out of here, the next left is Hardison Mill, and you'll see the backside of a great big orange yeah. sign. Wow. That's where you're turning. Okay. Oh, okay. Ah. All right. cool. Thanks. Appreciate it. I can one. see it now. Yeah, I guess you picked the right shoes after all. And then for us, it was also the sound checks that kind of happened during speakers. And also for the food trucks, the first day there wasn't oh. enough. We were in line a really long time. I will say that they seemed to listen to complaints. Um, my only other thing was I wish that there had been more shaded areas, especially for eating. Yeah, the our first day there, uh, since this is one of our first time at a conference similar to like this, uh, we were there was not enough food trucks and we were waiting in one line because a lot of the food trucks we just ran out of food is i was a i missed jess's speech and i just saw that a lot of people on her reels was crying about it and i was crying because i wasn't able to uh, be there but hopefully like she said is ho they adjusted quickly after the next day uh they had uh, more food trucks uh, I feel like they listened yeah. and did a pivot shift. And I think that they're invested in making it an amazing experience. I have high confidence that they're, it's going to be good here on out. Yeah, they had way enough uh, Porter Johns for the whole location. I'll uh, say that they had the cleanest Porter yeah. Johns I have ever seen with a midday cleanup and like this whole hand washing setup that I've never seen with Porta Johns. Yes. I was very impressed. The good thing about this uh, was the time frame in between the speakers. They gave you about 30 minutes in between speakers so you can either go to the Porter Johns, talk to one of the plenty amount of vendors that's, that was there, or even just the fellowship with other content creators or just people around there. So, And, and the lunch break was like an hour and a half. Yes. All the speakers had Q and A's, which was great. So mm -hmm. it, it was really a good event, I think. Now we're definitely going to be going to this event again, hosted in Tennessee. How do you feel about that? I am definitely down to do that again because I, I feel like it is worthy. The speaker that you really wanted to listen to because you're wanting to do pigs, I'm afraid of pigs. Pork rind got me on board to even contemplate pigs. Sweet! And that, he's a great speaker. Very great speaker. Yeah, and he was posed the question asking what the future of pork is for the homesteading. Holes and halves are not gonna be the future of pork. It's not, you can't make that much money off it. You need too many pigs and we're gonna make that sustainable. Retail cuts is not gonna be the future either. Because uh, freezer space, uh, a lot more intensive marketing for that. Um, the future really is in value added process. It doesn't matter whether it's pigs, chicken, uh, beef, whatever, right? So what do I mean by that? You can make more money off of charcuterie than you can off of a regular size pork chop, right? For example, people are selling charcuterie for like $6 an ounce at the cheap oh. end. An ounce, an ounce, you know how many ounces are in a pound? Yeah, exactly, that's a lot of money, right? 